in this house, we live, laugh, love, stay an iconic person band, screen theater, and read Australian books for me to recommend to you. Okay, in honor of Straya September, in honor of Kylie Minogue new album release week, I just felt compelled to make an Australian book recommendation video. This is by no means an exhaustive list. I've just picked out five that were on my physical bookshelf. Um, some of my favorite Australian books I've read, read on ebook. So I don't have those here. So I just picked five off of my um, shelves that I wanted to talk to you about. The first book that I picked out to talk about is Flames by Robbie Arnott. This is a book set in Tasmania by a Tasmanian author, and it follows some different storylines. Um, one where a brother is making a coffin for his still alive sister. One follows a water rat. One follows a father who is born from fire. And really what you want to come to this book for, I think is, um, if you're into like a multiple storylines that's thoughtful, evocative, um, and especially evocative in terms of like how animals and nature are written about, I think Flames is the book for you. Um, it's been a few years since I've read this, but I just remember being blown away um, following like the animal characters in this book and I just wanted to join them in their world um, but I just recently read Four Stray of September um, Robbie Arnott's The Rain Heron. This man he knows how to write an animal book he knows how to write a novel um, and so this is my first recommendation for you Flames. The next book I want to talk about is the Yield by Tara June Winch. Um, Tara June Winch is a Wiradjuri author and um, who now lives in France but you know is Australian and this book is seems maybe a little bit autobiographical because it's about a um, Wiradjuri woman who had lived in Europe for a long time but then came back to um, her her family's home um, where her grandfather, yeah, where her, her grandfather had just died, but she comes home for his memorial. Um, and so she re returns to this rural Australian town where there's like a big mining operation going on in what's supposed to be protected land. This is like not an out there storyline. This is like a real thing that happens in Australia. Um, no, it happens anywhere <laughs> that is colonized is, um, you know, the the goal of capitalism is to pinch every little bit of um, money out of the earth that you can, regardless of, you know, what it's actually there for, um, and who it actually has been um, caretaking it for millennia. And um, so a mining operation is is threatening her homeland and she is coming home um, at first you know doesn't really want to get involved but um, as the story goes on like you are um, following her stopping this mining company being destroyed and like you know the the climate activists the um, human rights activists that are there as well as a very unique part of the story is that it's also about her completing this dictionary and so you actually get to you know like read this like linguistics project um dictionary like intertwined with the story um and i think you know this is a very loved book i think that um, if you're interested in 
contemporary stories, the environment, linguistics, um, just a like good plot novel, um, then I think that you will love the yield. Um, Daisy also thinks that you might. The next book I want to talk about is A Room Called Earth by Madeline Ryan. This is a book that follows an autistic woman getting ready to go to a party. It's written by an autistic author. Um, and I love the main character of this so much. It's set in Melbourne. Um, and she, <laughs> the main character has a, has a cat named Porkchop and just as precious as Daisy I'm sure because she is so you know in love with Porkchop and just like the way that she talks about um her her thought processes and her interactions with like her cat like um I had I had tapped this from a long time ago um I think she's also a vegan um She's a vegetarian, or I think she's vegan, the main character. So I'm like, I feel very um, close to this character, but um, she's like going through like all the reasons why she like does not eat animals. Um, and she says symbolically, pork chop is every animal to me and I love him dearly. Look at him, he has a little soul, which has an agenda that miraculously involves staring at me all day. I feel so blessed. Sometimes when he sits on my lap, I tell him that he's a God and he shuts his eyes with what I'm sure is a gentle appreciative knowing. Like, that's how I feel with my cats. That is my every day. This book speaks to me um, so intensely. And just like how she's like thinking about things later about um, being neuro neurodiverse um, and um, just that the world isn't really like set up to appreciate how you're feeling about things and sometimes it's like hard to verbalize things in a way that other that is meaningful to other people but it you wish you could just like express the feeling in your body because sometimes it's it doesn't all come out um can definitely relate to that uh and i don't know just like if you're a person who likes contemporary stories about women in their like like 20s early 30s and you know like young adulthood i think that you'll really like this um i just like rereading the stuff that i tabbed makes me want to like reread this whole book because i just feel like so at home in her head um in a way that's like really comforting and like sometimes um you can feel very weird and alone uh, whenever you think about things in a certain way um, that's like different than you know where most people place value or meaning um, and so it's like it's like being with a friend and it, it like it this more than like you know any other character I think makes me feel like at home and and seen and yeah you're really lovely amazingly we don't have all of the states covered here so it's like interesting that we have a second tasmanian author my fourth book that i picked out is from the wreck by jane rawson um this book is historical a historical novel and like i mean i just i'm not usually like a book cover like i'm not i'm not a book cover buyer i'm a book cover picker upper but I'm not a book cover buyer um but like this is literally like the most gorgeous book that i've seen like it's um if even the little like octopus tentacles have like shimmers on them this is just so beautiful um it this is not why you should pick up the book but i'm just like I think this is the most beautiful book. Um, from the Wreck is a historical novel from the 1800s, 1859. Um, George Hills is the seemingly sole survivor of a steamer ship uh, sinking that, you know, like, mm, why does it sink? Um, 
but there's like a mysterious woman on board and this woman thing mysterious entity follows George throughout his life and um, the constant question is like what does this thing want from him and it's just like a beautiful again evocative story like if you want something that's like slightly speculative but really like lush literary um I think this does it for me I'm trying to think of like what else would be in the vein of this like light speculative I'm trying to think about what else would be in the vein of this like I think that this like gentle light speculative romantic evocative <laughs> mystery is something done well by Australians because if that sounds good to you then boy do I have another book that could fit the bill <laughs> and this I mean this has to be my favorite Australian book of all time because it's like this and Rebecca are like head to head I don't read a ton of stuff that is like of that time um like vintage like classics but Daisy, please. I don't read a lot of stuff that's like vintage classics like Rebecca or um or or Picnic at a Hanging Rock, but you know, since two of them are my the two of them are my favorite books, I should probably pick up more classics. Um but if you have not read this book, if you have not seen this movie, if you've not seen now the new TV miniseries, I have not seen the miniseries. Um but the movie also an all-time favorite movie for me. Um, this is about a um, college for young ladies in in Australia. In this is set in Victoria. Um, multiple hanging rocks in Australia, but this is the Victorian hanging rock. Um, this group of young ladies on Valentine's Day goes for a picnic. Um, some of the girls go to explore hanging rock and vanish without a trace and it's following this searching for these women in the time after this this picnic gone awry i don't like that premise sounds really good um but it sounds more flashy than like what's mostly like happening in this book which um to me is a lot about this like recreation of um like the english social classes in australia versus the land that actually is australia and the different history that has and how those two ideas do not align at all and um kind of how silly it is um for australians to to try to be english when that is you know not what they are and honestly not aspirational to to sorry to my english viewers but like there's there's a better world out there other than recreating england um but this is just everything about it um the i love like a light speculative element on top of something that's I mean that's Rebecca too like that's just my jam and so I'm not you know if you have other recommendations for me that are in this realm um please give them to me but yes speculative literary um women history are these buzzwords for you pick up Picnic at Hanging Rock um, and absolutely watch the movie as well. It feels like you're lost in a like hot, humid, romantic horror, beautiful dream. I don't know. Um, but those are the five Australian books that I wanted to talk about today. If you would like more um, Australian book recommendations, I definitely have them. I wrote like a um, 
a big, big list of them, but then decided, you know what, let's just stick to five today and not go into all of the um, ebooks, audiobooks, and whatever else that I've read, which is a lot of it because um, a lot of times, like, uh, Australian um, media can be a little bit like insular where it doesn't necessarily cross the pond um, unless it's like picked up by um, a British press or something like that and so a lot of times you do have to kind of seek it out um, on on ebook or whatever or like the rain here and like um, like sometimes stuff gets released like a year and a half two years over there before we ever get it here even whenever you know it's gonna be like a bigger book um, unless it's like a Jane Harper or something like that which you know that's its own that's its own video I'm not saying don't read Jane Harper so um, these are the books that I had to talk about today um, I think if you're a literary fiction reader there is a lot of good stuff to to pick from in Australia. I've had a little bit more difficulty finding um, Australian horror, but it's out there and I'm going to find it. Um, I have just a few recommendations that I could, you know, do a little video on that as well, um, but I'm always happy to read more. So um, let me know if you have any favorite Australian books. If any of these sound good to you, let me know which one you might be interested in picking up. Um, but I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye!